Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Of course, it's your girl cooking with Tammy. On this channel, we've made crab cakes. We've also made shrimp stuffed crab cakes. Well, today I want to show you how to make a delicious seafood crab cake. So without further ado, let's get to cooking. First one up, guys, is our lobster. Yes, we're going to be incorporating some lobster with this recipe. Yay! We also have colossal shrimp as well that's been washed clean to veins and ready to go. And let's see, of course, we have our lump crab. We're definitely gonna need at least a pound of lump crab. Now, when it comes down to our other ingredients, we're gonna need mayo along with an egg, Worcestershire sauce, lemon juice for our dry ingredients, of course, because we wanna give our seafood crab cakes a lot of flavor. We're gonna be using Cajun seasoning, seafood seasoning, cedar wood seafood seasoning. If you don't have the cedar wood seafood seasoning, then you can definitely uh, substitute with the cedar plank salmon seasoning as well along with Old Bay breadcrumbs and I believe that's it <laughs> so without further ado guys let's get to cooking first thing I want to do is cut my seafood on up I'm gonna slice the shrimp in half I'm not gonna cut it into small bite-sized pieces simply because I want our crab cakes to have texture I want not only flavor in every bite but I want it to have texture. I want us to be able to take, I want us to be able to distinguish our shrimp, our lump crab, and our lobster meat. That's it. Check it out. This is a lobster meat. I went ahead and removed the shell. Of course, washed it off really clean and cold salt water. And we are ready to go. Just like that. For this recipe, I'm only going to be using two lobster tails. As you can notice, some of them I am cutting in half and then slicing it in the middle again. And other pieces, I'm just cutting it in half one time and I'm leaving it like this. Once again, it's all about texture. To this bowl, I'm going to add my mayo. This is not Miracle Whip, it's regular mayo. Come on, the spoon already. <laughs> We're also gonna add some Dijon mustard. Can I use regular mustard? I've never made it with regular mustard. Maybe if you do, you can definitely let me know. But I prefer the Dijon mustard, to be honest. We're also gonna add our Worcestershire sauce, along with our lemon juice. You can use fresh lemon juice or bottles lemon juice doesn't matter we're also going to add our egg along with our cajun seasoning this is no salt cajun seasoning this is uh cooking with tammy brands if you want to use a regular cajun seasoning you can we're also going to add some old bay along with our cedar wood smoked seafood seasoning the cedar wood smoked seafood seasoning is going to bring out so much flavor because it has somewhat of a citrusy smoked flavor. We're also going to add some of our Cooking with Tammy seafood seasoning and we're just going to mix it all up. If you want to go ahead and beat your egg prior to adding it to the mayo mixture, you definitely can do that, but check it on out. It took us two seconds. And as you can see, the egg is perfectly combined and ready to go. All right, we are gonna add our lump crab. Mix it on in really good. We're gonna add our lobster meat along with our shrimp. We're going to fold them on in. We're not going to break it on up, all right, guys? If you realize what I'm doing, I'm folding the seafood into the crab meat mixture. Easy does it. Simply because this is lump crab, and if we're going to break the crab on up, we might as well go ahead and get us some special or claw crab. Let the lump stay in the lump. <laughs> fold it on in, just like that. Perfect. All 
All right, everything is folded on in, but how are we gonna make this stick together? That's where the breadcrumbs come in. We're gonna add a small amount at a time, about a tablespoon at a time. And once we're able to go in and mold our crab patties together, then we're good to go. However, if the mixture is a little bit too moist or too wet, then there's a problem. Quick mention, before I added the lump crab, I strained it on off. I made sure to get all of that reserve water that was sitting in the bottom of the can out of the can before adding the lump crab because if you add the lump crab to a bowl with all of that excess water, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up needing more breadcrumbs and you're gonna end up with a funny texture type crab cake. You're not gonna be tasting the crab or any of the seafood in the crab cake if that makes sense. I'm gonna take some of this mixture and if I'm able to mold it and it stays together, then we're in business. As you can see, it's still a little bit wet. So I'm gonna add just a small amount of breadcrumbs. Because the breadcrumbs along with the egg is gonna work as a binder. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and preheat our ovens to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and get a baking sheet. Let's line it with some parchment paper and let's get some mold in these Krabby Patties. I'm also going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray for that assurity because I don't want my crab cakes to stick to the paper. All right, we're going to grab our first one and we're going to mold it together. When it comes to the size, that's gonna be up to you and your personal preference. We're gonna place it down on the parchment paper. So we have to put our uncooked crab cakes into the freezer to solidify them, to prevent them from breaking on up. No, we don't. That's why it's really important to drain all of that water out of the can prior to adding the breadcrumbs. So that way you're gonna require less breadcrumbs and you don't have to place the um, patties into the freezer first. At 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes, this is what our crab cakes look like. However, I'm gonna place them back into the oven and turn it on the broiler setting for about two minutes until they brown up. We're like literally one minute away from pulling our crab cakes out of the oven. So in the meanwhile, I wanna go ahead and chop up some parsley. If you don't have fresh parsley, of course, use bottled parsley. Use whatever you have on hand. I went ahead and I also melted some butter. To the butter, we're gonna add some smoked paprika for a nice smoky flavor. We're also gonna add some cedar wood seafood seasoning. For a nice citrus kick. And we're also gonna add some lemon juice along with some parsley. We're gonna mix it all up really, really good. Let's get those crab cakes out of the oven. This is what the crab cakes look like after being on the broiler setting for about two to three minutes. However, if your crab cakes are not brown to your liking, allow the crab cakes to remain on the broiler setting for maybe if not two to three minutes, maybe three to four minutes, or even five minutes. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna check periodically until your crab cakes are nice and brown to your liking. I'm gonna take some of our delicious sauce and we're gonna place it on top just like that. Ooh, that looks gorgeous. And the sauce is gonna give it such an element of flavor because it has that nice citrus tang. Oh my goodness. Let's get some of that parsley. Gonna go in with our brush 
just stuff dab dab it on just like that and to bring it on home even more we're gonna garnish with parsley we're gonna cut into our seafood crab cakes to see exactly what it looks like check it on out perfectly cooked all the way through gorgeous gorgeous let's get some of this sauce into a quick taste test and i only have one word phenomenal if you haven't grabbed up your cooking with tammy seasonings definitely go on over to cooking with tammy dot shop grab up your seasonings because it's definitely going to elevate the flavors in your crab cakes as well guys these crab cakes are phenomenal as always, I'm your girl cooking with Tammy. Definitely try these crab cakes one out. Let me know what you think, and I will definitely catch you in another video.